Here it is, everybody, another episode of Ask the Lawyer. And today we're going to ask the lawyer about bankruptcy and how it applies to your vehicle. I'm Rob Rosenthal with AskTheLawyers.com. My guest today here to answer our questions is attorney David Schuster, uh, based in uh, Dallas with Schuster Law. David, thank you for making some time for us today. I appreciate it. Thanks. Happy to be here. So I'm guessing you get this question uh, quite a few times. Uh, I'm filing or considering filing for Chapter 7 bankruptcy. What about my car or my cars? First of all, do I, can I keep them? Yeah, you're entitled to keep the car. I mean, we're, we're in Texas, so we're dealing with the, the exemptions here. Uh, each state is different, but yeah, in Texas, you're entitled to keep a car for every licensed driver that's in your home. So, I mean, even if you're the titled owner of, of, your, of your car, your wife's car, and, and your children's cars, I mean, as long as there's a licensed driver for them, you can own them outright and keep them. Now, what if I have and maybe a paid off car that but there's no other licensed driver for that car do i do i need to get rid of one of them well that depends that's going to be a case-by-case -case situation how much is the car worth i mean most of the time i mean unless you're de dealing with a car that's worth more than five thousand dollars i mean there's also exemptions that you can apply just called wild card to anything so so chances are no chances are you do not have to give up that car you can okay. keep it okay uh it's only if it's like a pretty something pretty valuable that it can be moved pretty quick that'll It'll get the interest of a trustee to go sell it, uh, uh, but uh, it's all very predictable. So if you kind of talk to an attorney about how much this other car is worth, you can get it, that question answered very quickly. So if I'm thinking of filing for bankruptcy, David, there's a pretty good chance I'm not current on my car loan payments. Uh, does that affect whether uh, uh, whether I can keep it or how I keep it? Yeah, uh, well, in, in the long run, uh, yes, it will. Uh, but, uh, you know, you're not going to, you know, just like you won't lose a car if it's paid for, if you have a payment on it, um, you're not going to lose it unless, it, you know, you, you get it repossessed before you file the Chapter 7. So uh, it, we're talking just now about Chapter 7 bankruptcies, all right? So in Chapter 13, you're kind of reorganizing and repaying debts to make the creditors happy, right? right? If you're behind, you're getting caught up in a Chapter 13. But in a Chapter 7, it is a big common question. Like, I'm, I'm just getting a fresh start. I'm just wiping out my debts here, okay? Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously, I can't get a free car out of this, right. or this would just be, a, you know, a, a, a great boon to my business and, and 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 you know it just it doesn't work that way so you do have to eventually uh meet the creditor's terms if you want to keep the car but yes if you're late on your car file the chapter seven and you'll have this 90 day window where you have an automatic stay even in a chapter seven so you could be two three payments behind but when you file a chapter seven you know they get a bankruptcy notice and they can't come rep uh, repossess the car without uh first asking the court for permission to do so. So yeah, go into the chapter seven, a couple payments behind. It'll give you some breathing room. You know, chances are your attorney can work something out with the creditor to get caught up, even though you're in a chapter seven, uh, the, the uh, creditor for the car can contact your attorney and say, hey, you know, your client's a few months behind. And you say, okay, yeah, they can make up the payments. Here's how we're gonna do it. Um, or go through the chapter seven, everything on your credit report now says discharge. So guess what? You owe nobody nothing, right? Right. Uh, or you know everybody, you know you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> the big fat zero for your creditors. And so you, but you're driving around this car and it says that I don't owe Ally Financial, GM Financial, Toyota. It says I owe them zero, but here I am driving the car. Yeah, well that there's still a lien on the car, right? Okay. So in order uh, to keep the car in the long term after the bankruptcy, you're going to have to, um, you know, make an agreement with that creditor, right, after the bankruptcy's over gotcha. because of that lien. But you'll discharge your personal responsibility for the car. So zero dollars owed on the credit report. You can turn it in at any time during the bankruptcy, after the bankruptcy, and you still owe nobody nothing, as I said, right? So you don't owe the that GM financial any money, uh, but eventually they're going to want that collateral uh, back. Okay. So that was kind of my next question. If I decided, you know what, I was a crazy purchase. I just can't afford that payment. Even with my, with my zero balance now, uh, you can just turn it in and, and you're not responsible for the back, what's back, the back payments and maybe get a car that's much fits your better, your lifestyle better. I have had Chapter 7 bankruptcies filed just because they get into a car payment that is just crazy, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, you know, they, they, might, they might only have like a couple of thousand dollars in credit card debt, but they have a $35,000 car loan with a $700 payment, and they're driving around this car that, that they can't sell for more than 20, right? right? 
So that difference represents like another $15,000 of credit card debt, right? So yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you get rid of that debt when you file chapter seven, you'll, you'll wipe it out. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's a great thing because otherwise it'll just haunt you forever, right? Sure. And you'll have this, uh, this big car loan that, that you can't get out from under. What is reaffirmation and how does that apply here? Well, reaffirmation is is a very uh, uh, it, it's a very straightforward, but it's it's something that uh, that a lot of my clients just have a hard time wrapping their heads around, right? Like, you know, oh, I got to reaffirm my debt, right? So reaffirming means that when you go through bankruptcy and then everything on the credit report says zero, right? You right. owe nobody nothing. It's a zero down the line. You discharge all your debt course, except for the stuff that's accepted from discharges like student loans and maybe some tax debt. But you go through that bankruptcy, everything's zeroed out. But if you reaffirm that debt, then it goes back to reporting the way it's supposed to, right? So it says that you're on payment number 32 of 60 and you owe GM Financial $25,000, right? So that reaffirmation strictly is a way to have something remain on your credit report, right? That you're paying it, okay? Mm -hmm. So then why do you wanna reaffirm? Well, the only reason why you really wanna reaffirm is if the creditor is forcing you to do so. There are certain creditors uh, that uh, that will say, you know, well, in order to keep collateral, you have to reaffirm. And if you don't reaffirm, then after a certain uh, period of time, usually after the bankruptcy, uh, you know, they can come get the car, but that's a very narrow uh, occurrence. It, it, it's it, it's uh, you know usually just one or two creditors do that. Um, you know, I'm a, here local in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. I mean, you know, there's I'm thinking of uh, Ford Motor Credit and, and and a couple other creditors that will do that. Um, so reaffirming is not necessary. I almost never recommend it to anybody hmm. unless it's very clear that a they're able to make this payment every month. They're not late, they haven't been late, they're not gonna be late. And B, the car has value, right? So at any time they can sell it and actually get money to pay off the loan in full. And so that second requirement is, is pretty rare that, that unless they're nearing the end of the loan. Right. So, but if that's the case, then you sign that agreement during bankruptcy, gets reported on the credit report, says you owe GM Financial $3,000, Car is still worth five or six, go on the way. But that's that's a that's a, usually not the case. So most of the time, uh, we, we don't recommend reaffirmation because you're signing on to a, a big balance for a car that may not be worth that total loan amount. And so you're you know, most of the time you're better off not reaffirming these loans. And so you're not required to do so. Uh, but it's something that we look at on a case by case basis and discuss with the client. You know, yes, I want to reaffirm, or no, I don't want to reaffirm. But again. No matter what, you're not losing the car. As long as you're making the payment, and you're no more than one payment behind, you know, then you're, you're not going to lose the car in, in that scenario. So, so if you don't reaffirm, does that damage your credit report? I mean, obviously, the, the damage has been done probably by filing for Chapter 7, but... Yeah, good question. So the Chapter 7, obviously, is going to be a hit to the credit. But keep in mind, most of these people already are coming in to do the Chapter 7 because the credit's been hit down pretty hard, right? right? So the Chapter 7 doesn't take it down any further. In fact, it helps it to boost it back up quicker because mm -hmm. you have a lot of defaulted balances that are suddenly zeroed out. So, so the Chapter 7 uh, will improve rather than knock out your credit. So, But your question, you know, if I don't reaffirm, is it going to hurt my credit? No. The question is, if I do reaffirm, how much will it help my credit? The answer to that is very small. Okay. Amount. Not much of an impact. Once you go through that Chapter 7 and get a couple of credit cards that are reporting, credit cards uh, uh, after a Chapter 7 are the best way to rebuild credit. You just you know, you'll get a $500 limit credit card from Credit One, Capital One, right. credit.com. You'll get one of these, start using it and paying it. That'll report to the bureaus. That'll boost your credit. So reaffirmation, not required to rebuild credit. Well, and the other question, uh, you know, I started by saying you probably get asked a lot, can I keep my car? But the other question you get a lot is, okay, I file for Chapter 7. How long do I have to wait before I'm going to be able to get a car loan again? 
Yeah, good question. So once you get your Chapter 7 discharge, this is a 90-day process. You know, you file the thing in January, you know, by uh, by April, yeah, by April, you're you're good to go, right? So so you can get a car loan quickly. The, the uh, you know, it's, it's actually not required that you be done with Chapter 7 yeah. to get a car loan. Like, you can get one. Uh, but the the the, uh, the creditor who's given you this loan is 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 going to require some documentation that you're done with the bankruptcy. I, um, I did see one recently where they weren't done with the bankruptcy. They got the loan, and so you know there was some concern there with the creditor. But but yeah, I mean, so you want to be out of the bankruptcy before you get the car loan. Answer to your question: How long do I have to wait? Well, listen, you don't want to jump into, you don't want to walk into a car dealership, you know, saying, I'm going to pick up this car. And then you go sit down at the desk and say, oh, yeah, I got a discharge yesterday. How good of a deal can you give me, right? It's not going to be good. So you want to wait at least six months, ideally a year at least. But I would say, you know, a good solid six months, if a year, if possible, the best thing you can do for yourself is to either get a cash car or just keep that car creditor happy until a year after the bankruptcy. Now, keep in, this is an important thing to, to note. So if you if you if you don't reaffirm the vehicle, but you've stayed current enough where they never repossessed it, well then guess what? There's no negative reporting. Remember, it's a big fat zero in the credit report. Not only is it zero in the credit report to GM Financial, but the late pays or the no pays, they don't show up either. There's no reporting after the chapter seven on that. So you could wait a year after the bankruptcy to go turn in that car and nothing negative is reflected on your credit report. The last thing that is shown is that it was discharged in Chapter 7, even if you turn it in a year after the Chapter 7, right? So keep driving that upside down car. Just don't reaffirm it. Turn it in a year later and get a new car. Uh, one more question just occurred to me real fast, David. All this advice you've given, does, is that altered at all if you're leasing the car instead of purchasing the cars or the same issues? <laughs> Um, yeah, that's a good question. So yeah, same, pretty much the same thing. I mean, you're just dealing with different terms. It's, it's an assumption rather than a reaffirmation, but yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. You don't want to re-sign on to a lease or assume a, a, a lease. You know, in other words, have the lease before the bankruptcy and now you're going to reaffirm or assume right. the lease after the bankruptcy. You don't want to do it if it's one of these deals where it has a balloon payment on the end. Right. But, you know, if you know you're going to be able to make all those payments and your lease is going to be up in six months, well then, you know, a lot of those, we, we do want them to assume those leases if they didn't go over the mileage, if there's no damage, if all those other, you know, if they think that they can walk back into Toyota Financial or a Toyota dealership and, 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 and you know, then six months after the bankruptcy, they can say, look, I, I assumed my, my prior lease, I've met all the other terms, and yeah, you, you'll have a good chance of, of getting a new lease if that kind of, again, a narrow circumstance, if you think you're going to want to lease another car, um, I'm not a big fan of, of leases at all. I'm surprised people do them, but, hmm. but, uh, but yeah, I mean, same situation pretty much. Super helpful Evan, for information as usual, David. Thank you so much for your time and answering all our questions today. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Ask the Lawyer. My guest has been attorney David Schuster of Schuster Law in Dallas. If you want the best information about bankruptcy or you're ready to choose a lawyer that lawyers choose, make sure to go to askthelawyers.com. Also, take a second and click on the button at the bottom of the screen so you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and find out when we have future helpful episodes of Ask the Lawyer. Thanks for watching. I'm Rob Rosenthal with askthelawyers.com.